Hi guys, we've had quite a lot of questions come in asking what exactly is in the course uh, and how does it work? So this is a quick video just to explain what you go through, how you complete the course and what's inside it. So I'll give you a little rundown of the course we're just releasing now. Um, no one's seen this before, so this will be a kind of an exclusive. Um, essentially what you do with this course is uh, you log on to courses.heatgeek.com you find the course and then you go through different modules. So there's a welcome module and the first module after that is called What is Energy? In here, we've got this, just a short video, this one. Normally they're between 15 and 20 minutes long. Uh, you watch the video, you read some examples and some other bits in there, and then you refer to this workbook. So energy. You've got some information about energy here that you're meant to fill in the information from the, um, uh, from the video, um, uh, some more information, and then some questions. And then once you've got that module and understood it, you take the what is energy exam. It's an exam, but you can take it as many times as you like till you know that you've understood it. And those questions are very difficult, purposefully. We want to force people to go over onto the Facebook platform, which is where they get involved in what's called peer-to-peer -peer engagement. Peer-to-peer -peer learning has been proven to be the best way to implement, learn and understand information. Sharing and teaching others. Teaching, by far, makes you the most knowledgeable because you learn how to simplify things and you have to deeply understand it before you can pass over the information. So um, we, we encourage people to get involved in and chat on the groups. And then, um, yeah, so you, you do that and then you move on to the next one, which is heat loss calculations. If you have a look here, we've got a ton of information um, that you have to fill out and go through, uh, fill out all of that so you understand it, take the test. And what's the reasoning for doing this course? Why, why, would, why would somebody want to do it? There's a bit of a thing with our industry where we've kind of forgotten how to heating engineer. And, and what we say is that kind of the combi boiler was a get out, a, a get out of education free card. People have forgotten how to pipe size. Um, they've forgotten about um, pressure losses in systems, heat loss calculations. Because you don't need to do any of that with a combination boiler. You just put it in and it works. Yeah. When we move over to heat pumps, that's not going to cut it. We're going to have an absolute disaster on our hands if people just have that mentality and start putting in heat pumps. They've got to understand how to size pipes, how to do a heat loss, um, uh, different hydraulic ways of um, connecting into systems. Um, uh, um, what, what do you mean by that, like plate to plate or plate to plate, Or even a, a reverse return system for radiators, not right. between two units, but you know where you, your last radiator on the circuit is the first you put the return to, so you right. run an yeah. extra pipe to the end so it yeah, balances yeah. better. Um, uh, there's different ways of teeing into a system where you can split the load so it self-balances more. This is all the sort of stuff we go into in, in this course. And also, so there's four or five different types of buffer. Which buffer's best in which situation? There's a different answer for every situation. And you can only know that answer by knowing all the different variables about it. And that's the stuff we go into here. That's pressure, loss, velocity. Um, uh, uh, and this, so this, this will turn someone from a, uh, a, a basic heating engineer or even an advanced heating engineer and turn them into a master of heating engineering, hence the name of the course, Heating Mastery. And this, all of this that I'm going through now, this is only the first half of the course. And, and really what it's about is turning all the complicated academic jargon, where they like to make overly complicated words and make themselves sound self-important, and turn it into normal English that plumbers will understand. That's the biggest problem in our industry, that the people leading the way speak in an academic language. It's A, unnecessary, and B, not relatable. It's all about making it palatable so anyone can understand. And it is difficult, but at least it's written in English. Um, and also there's a big support network as part of the course. Okay, quick rundown of what we actually cover in the course. Um, so this is the first half of the course, uh, which is awakening. Um, we cover um, what is energy, which is uh, the units we use, how we work out and work with those units. Um, the second module is heat loss, how we do heat loss, what the different variables in heat loss. Third module is mass flow rate, and that's the relationship between energy uh, and time and how we work out our flow rates around the system. Um, the next module is velocity, how we work out velocities and why that's relevant. Fifth module is pressure loss, uh, pipe and pump sizing. Uh, sixth module, emitter sizing, very important one. 
Seventh module is controlling your source, which is controls, weather compensation, things like that. Second half of the course is being written at the moment and it's looking like it's going to be something like uh, emitter and control mastery, so levelling up from what we covered previously. Um, hydraulic separation, so uh, low loss headers, close couple T's, um, distortion uh, and when and where we don't need um, hydraulic separation. The next section on the part two of the course is advanced hydraulic understanding, which is where we go into more in depth into um, pressure differentials and things inside the system that might be relevant to us. Uh, we may have a, a module on here just on heat pumps, i.e. the variables that mean we can maximise our efficiency from the heat pump. And the last module is efficient hot water production, which isn't really ever talked about. People just assume your system's not efficient when it's doing hot water, and that's not the case. You can make it very efficient on hot water. And all of this is relevant, uh, relevant to commercial, as well as renewables and normal domestic gas boilers. Um, perfecting this stuff on normal domestic gas boilers means when you move over to commercial or heat pumps or any other technology, your job's gonna be much easier.